Just a couple days ago, one of our pro members shared this really cool website and since I keep a regular eye on awards, I had actually come across it before too. It instantly stood out because of its animations, really sleek and super polished. Right as you land on the site, you are met with this circular image gallery that has a really impressive hover animation. You can see, as you move your cursor over it, the images flip in this cool 3D fashion. Not just the one you are hovering over, but the surrounding ones as well. And it doesn't stop there. When you click on any of the images, the whole image gallery zooms in, creating a smooth transition. Now, I hadn't built something like this before, so it felt like an interesting challenge to take on. I am guessing the original site used 3JS for the animations, but I decided to try recreating it using just GSAP since that's what I'm more comfortable with. After spending a fair bit of time to put everything together, I managed to build this version, complete with that radius based hover animation where the nearby images flip along with your cursor. I also added that nice parallax effect as you move your cursor around which adds depth to the whole experience. And when you click on an image, the entire gallery rotates and zooms forward just enough to bring that exact image to the center. That was probably the trickiest part to get right. On the original site, the gallery always transitions to the same image no matter which one you click, probably because of the next part of their animation timeline. But I wanted this version to be more reusable and flexible, so I decided to create this version where clicking an image transitions to a state that centers that image and reveals a title associated with it. In this video, I'll walk you through how to build this from scratch using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and GSAP. If you enjoy this kind of content, please leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to access the source code for this project plus hundreds of other similar micro projects along with a new website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's jump into the code. The HTML for this project is pretty straightforward. To start, I have added a simple nav at the top, just a placeholder link and a line of text to give the layout some structure. Next. I am setting up a main container that's going to hold our image gallery. Inside that, there is an extra wrapper around the gallery itself and this is intentional. We'll be using both elements for different animations. The outer wrapper helps us create that subtle parallax effect when the mouse moves around and the gallery div will handle the zoom and rotation transitions. I am leaving the gallery empty for now because we'll be populating it dynamically using JavaScript. Below that, we have got a separate container for the image title which will appear when a gallery item is clicked. And finally, a simple footer at the bottom with placeholder text to wrap things up. That's all we need for the HTML. Next up, let's move on to the styling. I am starting off with a quick reset using the universal selector, setting margin, padding and box sizing to keep everything consistent across browsers. For the body, we are going with a light, neutral background color. Next up, some base styles for the links and paragraphs. I am using a custom font, setting the size and weight and tightening the letter spacing for a cleaner modern look. For images, I am making sure they scale properly using object fit cover and hiding the back face just so they maintain the image resolution when they scale in. Now on to layout. Both the nav and the footer are absolutely positioned, stretched, full width with a bit of padding. I am using flexbox here to space the content out and keep everything nicely aligned. The nav sticks to the top, the footer to the bottom. Then we have the container which takes up the full viewport width and height. Overflow is hidden so the gallery animation stays contained. Inside that, the gallery container is also full size. And here is where the fun begins. We are setting up a perspective and enabling 3D transforms. This is what lets us create the depth and parallax feel later on. The gallery itself sits in the center. It has a fixed size and will hold our image cards, again using flex to center everything. And we are prepping it for smooth transforms. Each card is absolutely positioned, fairly small and uses 3D transform styles as well. We have got a bit of border radius for a softer look and overflow hidden to make sure images don't spill out. Next is the title container which will show image titles dynamically. 
it's fixed near the bottom center of the screen and clipped using a polygon just so we can animate the titles through it later on. Inside it, the paragraph tag is centered and styled to stand out with a larger font size and tight letter spacing. Finally, I'll add some CSS for the word class which will dynamically add to each word of the title using the split text plugin for the animation later on. That wraps up the CSS, everything is set up for a smooth dynamic experience. Now before we dive into JavaScript, I have created a separate file called collection.js to keep things a bit more organized. This file simply exports an array of objects. Each object represents a gallery item with a title and an image path. We'll be using this collection to dynamically generate the image cards inside our gallery using JavaScript. Keeping this data separate makes things cleaner and it's easier to update or reuse later on. Alright, with that in place, let's move on to the main script and start bringing this gallery to life. Just a heads up before we begin, to keep the video short, I won't be going into too much detail. I'll focus on the overall approach and logic. If anything is unclear, feel free to reach out to me on Discord and I'll be happy to discuss more if you have any questions. Okay, let's start by importing what we need. We are pulling in our image collection from collection.js file we just created and also importing gsap and the split text plugin. Then inside the DOM content loaded event, which runs once the page has fully loaded, we register the split text plugin with gsap. Next, we grab a few key elements from the DOM gallery, which will hold all our image cards, gallery container, which wraps the whole gallery and lets us animate it in 3D, and the title container, where we'll display the text when a card is selected. We then set up a few variables. Cards will store all the card elements we generate. Transform state will keep track of the position, scale, and rotation for each card. And we also set up a few flags to control transitions and previews. Then there is the config object. This is where we define all our constants in one place. Things like the number of images we want to show, how far the cards should be from the center, how sensitive the hover effect is, how much each card moves or scales on hover, and a love factor to control smooth animations. Finally, we set up the parallax state. This will control how the entire gallery tilts in response to mouse movement. It has both a target and current value for X, Y, and Z. We'll use this to create that smooth floating motion later. Alright, that's the initial setup. Next, we'll start generating the cards and placing them in a circular layout. We are looping through based on the total number of images we want in the gallery, which we have defined earlier in our config. For each iteration, we calculate the angle where that card should be placed around the circle. Since a full circle is 2 pi radians, we divide that circle evenly across all the cards, so each card gets a unique angle based on its position in the sequence. Then, using a bit of trigonometry, we calculate the x and y coordinates. The x comes from the cosine of that angle, and the y comes from the sine. Both are multiplied by the radius we set in the config, which basically controls how far out from the center each card should sit. This is how we position the cards evenly around a circle. After that, we create a new card element, give it a class, and assign it a unique index. We also attach the corresponding title from our image collection so we can use it later when the card is clicked. Then we create an image element, set the image source and add it inside the card. Once that's done, we use gsap to position the card on the screen using the x and y values we calculated. We also rotate each card so it faces outward from the center, that's where the angle comes in again. We then add the card to the gallery container and also push it into the cards array so we can access it later on. At the same time, we store a set of animation related values for that card in our transform state. Things like its current and target rotation, position offset, scale and the angle we just calculated. We'll use this state to control the animations later on. Finally, we add a click event to each card. When a card is clicked and we are not already in the middle of the animation, we call a function to activate the preview mode for that specific card. And that's it. We have now dynamically created and placed all the cards in a perfect circle, each one clickable and ready to animate. Next up, we'll handle what happens when one of these cards is clicked. 
This is handled inside the toggle preview function. First, we set up a couple of flags. We mark the preview as active and also set a transitioning flag to make sure the user can't interrupt the animation while it's in progress. Next, we grab the angle of the clicked card. Remember, earlier we calculated and stored that angle for each card when placing them around the circle. We also define a target position, which is basically where we want the clicked card to end up, in this case, the bottom of the circle. That position is 3 quarters of a full circle or 3 pi by 2 in radians. We then calculate how much the whole gallery needs to rotate so that the clicked card lines up with that target position. But here's the tricky part. We want the gallery to take the shortest possible rotation path, so we do a quick check. If the rotation is more than a half circle, we adjust it by subtracting or adding a full circle to keep it smooth. Then, before starting the animation, we reset the state for every card, clearing out any scale, rotation or movement from previous interactions. Now, we animate the entire gallery. First, inside the on start callback of the animation, we loop through all the cards and reset their position and rotation. This makes sure they are all back in the correct circular layout before the zoom starts. Then we scale up the entire gallery, move it downward and rotate it just enough to bring the clicked card into the center. The scaling and translation make the whole gallery feel like it's zooming in toward you. At the same time, we reset the parallax motion, we animate the rotation on all three axes back to zero, so the gallery straightens out before going into preview mode. Now, once the gallery is rotated and zoomed in, we grab the title of the click card and create a new text element for it. We append it to the title container and then we pass it through the split text plugin. This splits the title into individual words so we can animate each one separately. At first, we position the words just out of view and then animate them upward into place with a slight delay and a stagger that creates that really smooth layered reveal effect. So now, when a card is clicked, the gallery rotates and zooms in, resets the parallax and shows the title of the image in a nice animated way. Alright, next up, we'll handle resetting everything when the user clicks outside the preview. First, we check if an animation is already in progress. If it is, we exit early so we don't accidentally trigger multiple transitions at once. Then we set the transitioning flag to true so nothing else can interrupt the reset while it's running. If there is a title currently being shown, we animate it out, we grab all the individual word elements, those which were created using the split text plugin, and animate them upwards off screen with a nice staggered effect. Once the animation is done, we remove the title element from the DOM and clear the reference to it. Next, we handle scaling the gallery back down, we check the viewport width to decide how much to scale the gallery, smaller screens get a smaller scale to keep things responsive. For example, if it's under 768 pixels, we scale it down to 0.6. If it's a bit wider, we go with 0.8. Otherwise, we leave it at the default scale of 1. Then we animate the gallery back to its original state. We reset its position, scale and rotation. This gives us that nice smooth zoom out effect as it transitions back. Finally, once that animation is complete, we clear the flags and also reset all parallax related values so the gallery is fully back to its default state, ready for the next interaction. That's how we exit the preview mode cleanly and reset the scene. Alright, next we'll take a look at how we handle window resizing and mouse movement to bring in the interactivity. The handle resize function gets triggered whenever the window is resized. First, we check the current width of the screen and update a flag to let us know whether the device is mobile. Basically, anything under a thousand pixels wide. Then, depending on the viewport width, we adjust the scale of the gallery. On smaller screens, we scale it down so it doesn't overflow or look oversized. This just keeps everything looking good across different devices. We use GSAP to apply that scale directly to the gallery. Now, if we are not in preview mode, meaning the user hasn't clicked on any card, we go ahead and reset the parallax state and all the animation states for each card. So basically, we clear out any leftover transforms like rotation, scale, and movement that might have been applied earlier. At the bottom, we hook the function into the window resize event so it runs automatically whenever the screen size changes. 
and we also run it once right away to apply the correct settings on the page load. After that, we add another event listener to the document itself. This listens for the click events outside the cards. So if a preview is open and the user clicks anywhere else, it resets the gallery back to its default state. All right, next, we'll take a look at how the parallax effect works based on the mouse movement. We are listening for the mouse move event on the whole document. But before doing anything, we first check if the gallery is in preview mode or if an animation is already running or if the user is on a mobile device. If any of those are true, we skip the interaction entirely. Otherwise, we calculate the mouse position relative to the center of the screen, both horizontally and vertically. We convert those values into percentages, which gives us a range from minus one to one, depending on how far the cursor is from the center. We then use those percentages to update the target rotation values for the gallery, tilting it slightly on the X, Y, and Z axis. This is what gives us that smooth, reactive parallax effect as the mouse moves around. Now for the fun part, the hover effect. For each card, we calculate the distance from the mouse to the center of that card. And if that mouse is close enough, based on a sensitivity threshold we defined earlier, we start animating that card. We calculate a flip factor based on how close the mouse is. The closer you are, the stronger the effect. Then we apply a 3D rotation, increase the card scale, and also push it outward from the circle a little bit using the same angle we originally used to place it. If the mouse moves away from a card or gets too far, we reset all those properties, the rotation, scale, and position, so everything returns to normal. So as a result, when you move your mouse around, nearby cards gently flip and move toward you in 3D space, while the whole gallery rotates slightly based on your cursor movement. It makes everything feel way more immersive and responsive. Up next, we'll look at how we actually animate those transforms in a smooth frame-by-frame -frame loop. I'll add a function called animate. This function runs continuously using request animation frame, which is the browser API that syncs the animation updates to the screen refresh rate. Now inside the loop, we first check if we are not in preview mode and not transitioning. If we are in the middle of a transition, we pause updates so we don't interfere with other animations. If everything is clear, we begin by smoothing out the gallery's rotation using a technique called linear interpolation or lerping for short. This helps us gradually move the gallery's current X, Y, and Z rotation values toward the target values we calculated from mouse movement. We have used this technique in tons of our previous videos. Then, we apply those updated values to the gallery container using GSAP, which gives us that smooth, continuous parallax effect based on where the mouse is. Next, we loop through each card and do the same kind of smoothing for all their animation states, things like rotation, scale, and how much they are offset from their original circle position. Again, we use lerp to move each value from its current state toward its target. That's what creates that soft, natural motion instead of having things snap instantly. We then recalculate the card's position on the circle using the original angle we gave it during setup and we apply the updated offsets for the hover effect. Finally, we update each card's transform using GSAP, including its position, rotation and scale, all while keeping the 3D perspective. And that's it. The function calls itself again with request animation frame and keeps everything animating in real time. With this in place, the gallery feels smooth and alive, the cards over, rotate and float naturally with your mouse movement and it all stays performant. That wraps up the animation logic. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.